Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So far, nine problems I've completed on valuation of shares. In this video, two more problems I'm going to explain, 10th and 11th. These problems are a little bit different from the earlier problems. So focus, concentrate on the new points in every problem. Almost 90% points are same. Only 10% every problem will differ. So focus on those new points. So before starting the 10th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Take a screenshot of the points, then I'll explain. Now, see the 10th problem. <clears throat> Following is the balance sheet of Ravi Limited as on 31st March 1995. The share capital 10 lakh, reserves and surplus 5 lakh 80,000. No non current liabilities. Trade payable 5 lakh and other non current liability bank overdraft 5 lakh. The total of liabilities 25 lakh 80,000. Then assets, tangible assets 13 lakh 50,000. Other non current assets, preliminary expenses 20,000. Ignore preliminary expenses. It's a fictitious asset. Then inventories are given trade receivable and cash and cash equivalent. The total of the balance sheet 25 lakh 80,000. Share capital 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each, 10 lakh. Reserves and surplus, general reserve, PL account. Then tangible assets. Here tangible assets are given 13 lakh 50,000. The breakup of the 13 lakh 50,000 is machinery 8 lakh, factory shed 3 lakh, vehicle 2 lakh, and furniture 50,000. Total 13 lakh 50,000. The following additional information is furnished. Machinery and factory shed are worth 30% above their book value. That means machinery value should be increased by 30% and factory shed should also increase by 30%. Depreciation on appreciated value of machinery and factory shed is not to be considered for valuation of goodwill and share. So don't calculate depreciation on the increase in the value of machinery and factory. Now, for the purpose of valuation of shares, goodwill is to be considered on the basis of four years purchase of super profit based on average profit after tax of the last three years. Profit of the last three years after tax are as follows. This is a comprehensive problem. In this problem, first we have to calculate the value of goodwill according to super profit method. In the previous videos, I have explained you how to calculate the value of goodwill by applying super profit method. So average, we have to take profit for the year ended 31st March 1993, 2,60,000. Next, 1994, 3,50,000. 1995, 2,90,000. Last three years profits. In a similar business, return on capital employed is 15%. This is the NRR and find out the value of each equity share on net assets basis. So we have to calculate only intrinsic value, not yield value. Not yield value. Then why this uh, return on capital employed is given? Because we have to calculate goodwill. For calculating goodwill according to super profit method, we need NRR. For that purpose, NRR is given. So before finding out the value of share, first we need to value, we, we need to calculate the value of goodwill according to super profit method. Super profit is equal to FMP minus NP. Future maintainable profit minus normal profit. So for super profit, we require two things. Normal profit and future maintainable profit. So calculation of goodwill by super profit method. Assets. Assets, machinery, 8 lakh is the book value. 30% is the increment given in the adjustment. So 10 lakh 40. Factory shed 3 lakh rupees is the book value, 30% increase, 3 lakh 90,000. All other assets values are same, no change. Vehicle, furniture, stock, debtors, bank. Total of assets 28 lakh 90,000. Outside liabilities are bank, OD, creditors, 5 lakh, 5 lakh, 10 lakh. So capital employed 18 lakh 90,000. So 18 lakh 90,000 capital employed. Normal profit is equal to capital employed into NRR. Normal rate of return that is given in the last sentence. So 18 lakh 90,000 into 15 percent, you get 2 lakh 83,500. This is the normal profit. 
Now we need the future maintainable profit FMP. The meaning of FMP is past average profit adjusted for future changes. If changes are given, then we have to make the changes on the past average profit. But in the present problem, we are not given any changes. So simply we take past average profit as the FMP. The last three years profits are given 2,60,350 and 2,90. Add up and divide by 3, you'll get 3 lakh. The future maintainable profit FMP 3 lakh. Now super profit SP is equal to FMP minus NP. FMP 3 lakh and SP on NP is 2,83,500. Subtract, then we get 16,500 is the super profit. Now goodwill is equal to super profit into number of years of purchase. In the problem it is given 4 years of purchase. 4 year of purchase is given in the problem. So 16,500 into 4, 66,000 is the goodwill. Now we need to calculate the intrinsic value. Calculation of intrinsic value, assets. Goodwill, just now we have calculated the value 66,000. Same 66,000 I have taken. Now remaining all assets I have copied from here. Machinery, factory, shed, vehicle, furniture, stock, guitars, bank. All these assets, same values I have taken here. Total of the assets, 29,56,000. Total assets. Outside liabilities are only two. Bank, overdraft and creditors, deduct. 19,56,000. No preference share capital is there. Put a dash. So 19,56,000 is the amount available for equity shareholders or net worth. Then intrinsic value, amount available, divide the number of equity shares. Number of equity shares are given, given in the problem, 1 lakh. 1 lakh shares are there. So 19.56 is the intrinsic value of equity share. That's it. Now, 11th problem. See the 11th one. From the balance sheet of J. Adams Company Limited as on 31st December 1994, compute the value of its equity share by capitalization of earnings method. Capitalization of earnings method means yield basis, not intrinsic value. Now, liabilities. Share capital is given, reserves and surplus, long term borrowings, 10% debentures, 3 lakh. Current liability, 2 lakh 50,000. Total of liability, 12 lakh. Assets, fixed assets, tangible, 6 lakh. Other non current assets, preliminary expenses, 25,000. Ignore, don't consider. Current assets, 5 lakh 75,000. Total, 12 lakh. Debentures are issued at par on 1st January 1990 and redeemable at par on or before 31st December 1999. We are not concerned. This is just an information. When it was issued, when it is redeemable. Next page. For the year ending 31st December 1990, 1991, 92, 93, 94. Five years information is given. What information? Sales. Every year sales are given. Expenses are given, interest on loan is given, interest on debentures are given. Sales is a revenue and all expenses, interest on loan, interest on debentures, these are all the expenses. Income minus expenses will get the profit. So in this problem, profit is not given. We have to find out the profit. How to find sales minus all expenses? Then assume the rate of taxation at 50% and the normal rate of earnings is 12.5%, NRR 12.5%. First of all, we need the profit of the 5 years. See, calculation of the profit of the last 5 years, 1990, 91, 92, 93, 94, sales are given. That I denote it as A. A is the sales. Now cost. In the problem, costs are given expenses, interest on loan, interest on debentures. Three costs are there. Take the total of the three costs, 450, put it as B, total cost. And we know profit is sales minus total cost. This is sales and this is total cost. A minus B, you will get profit before tax. This is the profit before tax. From that, deduct tax at the rate of 50% given in the problem. The 50% of 5 lakh is 2 lakh 50,000. 50% of 4 lakh 50,000 is 2 lakh 25,000. Like this 50% tax we have calculated. Deduct to the tax, we'll get profit after tax. Profit after tax. 
5 lakh minus 250, 2 lakh 50,000. 450 minus 225, 225. We got the profit after tax for all the four, five years. Take the total of the profits. If you take the total of the profit, 14 lakh 10,000. An average profit, 14 lakh 10,000 divided by 5, 2 lakh 82,000. This is the average profit, right? Now, we need ERR, expected rate of return. Average profit divided by equity share capital. Equity share capital is given in the problem 5 lakh. The 2 lakh 82,000, this is the average profit divided by 5 lakh equity share capital into 100. 56.4% that is the ERR, expected rate of return. Now, simply we substitute the values in yield basis formula. Yield value of share is equal to expected rate of return divided by normal rate of return into paid up value per share. That is the formula. ERR 56.4%. Uh, NRR normal rate of return given in the last line 12.5%. And the paid up value per share is 10 rupees. That is also given. Now divide and then turn multiply 45.12. 45.12 is the yield value of share. So in this video, two problems have explained that is 10th and 11th. And many new points we came across in this problem. So focus on those new points, make a note of it. Definitely you can be able to have confidence on this topic of valuation of shares. Inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video.